In this video, we're going to take a look at the following data structure. Graphs, both directed and undirected. The graph data structure is another very versatile data structure in the field of computer science. Most of the time, it's used to model some kind of network. Like many of the other data structures we look at, it's a dynamic data structure, which means it can grow and shrink. It can be used, amongst other things, to model or represent navigation systems, data transmission, web page links, social media trends, and much, much more. Here's a very simple graph. You can see it's a collection of interconnecting nodes. However, unlike a tree, there are no rules or limitations about how these nodes can be connected to each other. There's no such thing as root or leaf nodes. When we talk about graphs, we refer to each of these nodes typically as a vertex. And the paths that link the vertexes are known as edges or arcs. Usually a graph will have more edges than vertices. A graph that has more edges in related to vertices is known as a dense graph. One which has few edges in relation to the number of vertices is known as a sparse graph. With some graph, the edges are directional, as we can show see here. This is known as a directed graph. A graph where all of the edges are bidirectional is known as an undirected graph. This can often be shown, as we do in this example, with arrowheads on both ends, or simply with no arrowheads at all. Edges in a graph can sometimes have a weight or a cost associated with them, as shown here. The weight or cost shown on each edge, of course, depends on the application of that particular graph. For example, these costs here could be distances in kilometres for a sat-nav roadmap, or it could be the capacity in bits per second of an internal network. A graph is said to be a set of vertices and edges. It's possible to list these vertices like this inside curly brackets, and each edge can be listed as a pair of vertices like this. You need to be familiar with this text-based way of representing a graph for the exam. If we add in the costs, we end up with a complete representation in text like this. If you're provided with this information in the exam, you should be able to reconstruct this graph from this textual representation. Now, another way you might see this graph represented is in a table format, and this is known as an adjacency matrix. And we can just go through this for a second here. We can see, for example, that to go from A to C is a cost of 2. From A to C is a cost of 2. Also, to go from C to A is the cost of 2, and that's because this edge is bidirectional. From A to B is a cost of 8. From A to B is a cost of 8. But we can't go from B to A because this one is unidirectional. Now, this adjacency matrix is only one way of representing our graph. Another method you have to be familiar of is the idea of an adjacency list. In this situation, we list all the vertices or nodes. There are several ways of implementing this. Here is a typical way where we implement a list of dictionaries. The key in each dictionary being the node and the edge being the weight. So I can see here that node A links to B with a cost of 8 and node C with a cost of 2. One final thing for the exam is you have to understand the advantages and disadvantages of using an adjacency matrix as a method of representing a graph and an adjacency list. Well, this adjacency matrix is very easy and quick to work with. Adding new edges 
and checking for the presence of edges is really simple. We could construct this in a 2D array, which is a nice simple data structure, and a pair of for loops would cycle through the entire array quickly and easily. However, imagine now that we had a very sparse graph with lots of nodes down here and across here, but very few edges. This would result in a lot of empty space in this graph. Of course, this problem becomes worse and worse the bigger the graph becomes. And of course, this actually relates, in computing sense, to a lot of wasted memory if this data structure is being stored as an array. Also, if implemented as an adjacency matrix, then it can now be hard to delete individual nodes. The adjacency list, on the other hand, is incredibly space efficient. It uses much less memory to store a sparse graph.